Uh, anything else you want to, something you want to ask? Or? Um, yeah, I do have a question in terms of porn. Like yeah. when boys are in that discovery phase, I've found that, and I've heard from a lot of guys that it seems to be like older cousins that have like showed them porn. Do you mm. think that that shapes men's ability to be intimate how a woman receives it because 70 percent of women are having to satisfy themselves mm. after having sex with their partner because their partners are not doing it for them i don't think porn is the reason though i think that's always been the case for women i think before porn was around mm. i don't think most women were sexually satisfied in the bedroom why do you think that is because I think historically sex has always been seen as for the man because mm. it's always been seen as the woman giving to him. Mm. So the focus has always been His on him. Yeah. Um, and especially if you take, if we're taking, you know, to have children, it's only the man who needs to orgasm to make kids. Like if he doesn't orgasm, you're not having kids. If she orgasms and he doesn't, you're not having kids. That's true. But she doesn't need to orgasm in order to have kids. Um, but obviously, most of the time, people have sex is, is not <laughs> for the intents and purposes yeah. for a nine-month uh, <laughs> term to come. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think, but I, I don't think that's down to porn. Um, I think the, the effect porn has is on young boys, especially, bef you know, most boys <laughs> discover porn before they actually have sex. Mm. They just get a wrong idea of sex, to be honest. They just think that's what sex is like. So then do you think that that's the, re so how do you feel that you get, we get, as women, because we do deserve to have a great sex life just as much as men do. Yeah. So it's like a lot of women that are going off and getting Chad and Tyrone is probably because Chad and Tyrone know, uh, what, they're doing. know what they're doing. Big facts. So it's like, my theory is, is that the woman, as women, we should take it as our responsibility to teach our partners I agree. And then, then eventually it will then filter down to boys getting taught by men. I don't think boys can. Uh, well, because you, you didn't have the chat with your dad. Uh, Did men not have chats with dads? I don't know how it works for the man no, side I'd, of things. I'll I'd, I'd tell you why. I think because every woman is different. So what works with one woman <clears throat> won't work with the next. So you, <clears throat> so quote, unquote, Chad and Tyrone's, the reason they're so good what makes them good is that they figure out very quickly mm -hmm. with each woman mm -hmm. how to get her to the end yeah that that that's the intelligence part there's sexual intelligence there is if sexual you will intelligence, right yeah. but it's um because the same thing do you think it's nice. emotional intelligence because for a woman i'm a tantric practitioner so like we very much slow everything down so like men want everything hard and fast and da -da 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 -da, whereas yeah. a woman wants it completely opposite it's very slow touch like all of these things, do you think it's because women are very more in tune with their feelings? So because men are not, mm. it's not sexual intelligence. It's more, they understand that, okay, I have to tap into my emotions. I think it's, um, I think with guys, <clears throat> for a guy to get horny, mm. you can just see a pair of boobs. <laughs> boobs. Like it, like it really <laughs> doesn't take much. Yeah. But for a woman too, there's a level of mental play that needs to be there. Yeah. And and like guys think seduction starts from when you kiss her. Nah, it starts from when you text her. Yeah, one hundred percent. And some guys are so dead. Yeah. I'm like Because like you be like, oh, and, and this is and I've in my experience, I found this with because I've had friends with benefits before and like fuck buddies and stuff, mm. right? And there's a difference between the two. Fuck buddy is just someone who just comes over, you just have that. And then it's cool. And then they go. Friends with benefits, I guess there's a level of friendship there. There's still mm. a level of connection there to some degree. Mm. And you're not really dating each other seriously, but you do have physical intimacy together, mm -hmm. right? And as a general rule, the sex and that experience has always been better with friends with benefits for me mm. because there's a level of, level of friendship there. It's not just, oh, come over and it's done. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but guys don't really, in answer to your original question with the ch Chads and Tyrants who are good at it, there is a level of emotional intelligence because for her to have an amazing time later, mm. you have to build that up mentally 
before you even touch her. That's and true. there's a things like if you're out, if we're out and about and let's say we're out on a date or whatever, let's say we've been dating each other for a bit and then, you know, we're talking to a couple of people but now just look at you and then go back to the conversation. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> that look is planting the seed. One you're watering the seed. Mm. And it's not even saying anything, but yeah, it's just yeah. like, Unspoken. I'm talking here, mm-hmm. but I see you. Yeah. Like you still, you. I right. still have my eye on you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, 100%. So I think it's like, yeah, I think there is a level of emotional intelligence mm. for a guy to be really good if he's going to get to that point. Um, but there is, it's multiple things. There's like, maybe he just really knows what he's doing. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. Like he's just, he just really knows what he's doing. Um, some women are easier to please than others. 100, yeah, yeah. I've had this conversation. I find that women that are a bit more shallow are easier to please. What do you, you mean? That They're not bothered about the mental connection. They're just like, yeah, as long as he looks good, I'm good. Because I've got friends that are like, yep, he just has to look at me and I'm coming. I'm like, what? Me, like, I think that depends on how attractive whole... he is, though. Because that is like... No, with me, it doesn't matter how attractive you are. Like, at all. It doesn't matter So how you, Okay, you well, who's your celebrity crush? I don't really have one. No? No. I would marry Will Smith, but I mean, he's not really my celebrity crush. You, d- you don't look at a guy and think, oh, I'd rip your clothes off. Oh, what's his name? Um, oh, I'm so bad with names. Um, Black he- Panther, the guy that's in Black Panther. What's his name? Chadwick Boseman or Michael B. Jordan? Michael B. Jordan. Okay, so you're telling me Michael B. Jordan showed up tonight and wouldn't spend the night with you. You wouldn't be super turned on? I'd be turned on, but am I going to come? Probably not. Really? Depends what he's like, but I mean, I think there's only been one person who the first like couple of times mm. made me come. It's taken years sometimes Why is that? because of the mental connection. Ah, I'm like I've, I'm like if somebody's like you said, it's like the texting and the like. I, there needs to be a story created. Yes, and if there's no story, story created, I'm just like this is dead. Yeah. Like, I'm not excited to see you let alone yeah. have sex with you. That's why Fifty Shades of Grey was such a hit because it was the ultimate story of My seduction. My book's so much better. What's your book? I've been, I'm, it's an erotic romance. Is it? Yeah. Describe the guy in the book. There's t- So it's written from a male and female's perspective. Okay. So um, I'm not doing the whole superior man comes and saves the day with all of his money and like she mm. then like, submits to him yeah it's more they're going through they're both going through different types of relationships so based on control based on lust and then eventually they meet each other where it's more of a, like a flow in unconditional love rather than to be dead so you were saying about uh you're describing my the book. the book and that in the relationship they're in relationships of controlling yes. of control so there's lust and love and yeah and then they go the guy goes off and I find that like women will go into this introspective like I need to find myself stage where they'll do like self love stuff and then guys will go on this like more explorative externally and have like multiple partners yes before they then decide to settle down yeah so then they go they both go off. They haven't met each other yet and then yeah. they'll meet each other. But there's moments throughout the book, like when they're at a sex party, they're both at the same sex party at the yeah. same time, but they don't know each other yet. Okay. And so it's, it's written like, as you read it, it's like, goes from like the females and then it'll go into the male's story and then the same throughout the whole book. And okay. they find unconditional love with each other. Is there such a thing nah. as unconditional love? <laughs> I mean, okay, so it's very hard to find, but it's a story. So yeah. I mean, we can put a bit of fiction in there too um can it be found i I believe anything's possible so i mean if you can conceive it if you can conceive it you if you believe it you You can can conceive it it. um Mm. so i mean i i don't give up hope but i'm like a hopeless romance (laughs) i'm like one day i think um this sounds pessimistic I, i i think the only conditional love is the one you have for your children I mean, and your parents. Yeah, yeah, and maybe and your parents. Um, I see, yeah, family in general. Yeah, I, I think you can still love. Yeah. But there's boundaries in any relationship. So mm. I think people see the, the conditions as boundaries, but boundaries is just an act of self-love. So that even within that, you're still loving. And if they don't I want, if you're both acting from exactly the same space in terms of your ideals of love yeah then it can be created if you're both on it's when one person is trying to force like if i was to get with somebody who's really 
pragmatic and wasn't that spiritual and didn't believe that it was possible, it wouldn't be possible. Yeah. Because I would be forcing my ideals onto him. But then I kind of, I almost think that the understanding that love isn't conditional is actually what makes relationships work. Because you then go, okay, it's not about, oh, I'm scared this person won't choose me. Because love is a choice, yeah. right? There's the emotional feeling mm -hmm. of, I feel and have a lot of care for this person. Yeah. But if you're choosing, like loving someone is choosing to invest in the relationship every, every day. day. Even when you don't like them. Even when you don't want to. And you look at them and you're like, ugh. Exactly. I fucking right? hate this person, but I love him. Yeah. So I think, I think understanding that, and it's not a pessimistic, it's not to have a pessimistic view or perspective on it, but it's understanding that, no, there's a level of effort that I do have to make. Yeah, but that's... Do you know what I mean? That doesn't mean it's not going to be... Un that it's not going to be unconditional it just means i mean that it can't be unconditional unconditional just means that in throughout all of the shit as long as it's within boundaries and we still i would still love you the love doesn't change mm. based on so like just say you've annoyed me mm. i'm not gonna remove my love for you you know some people can be quite spiteful they yeah. then stop doing things at the from a place of love because that person's annoyed them mm. so that's where that i'll continue to water you yes just like i would my plants just like i would with my children i mm. will continue to water you even if you fucking annoyed me today yeah and so that's for me but i think what, that's like i said you're choosing love though yeah but that's unconditional because i'm i'm not using them conditions to remove my love well i mean if they like were cheating on you promising that they weren't you probably would well, leave. yeah that's a boundary though you've you've disrespected my boundary and that's when like if you've chosen if you're also choosing to unconditionally love me yeah and respect my boundaries would be one of those things because you're choosing to love me then yeah. it has to be on both sides one person can't unconditionally love one person without the other person do it has I, to be reciprocal yeah of course but i guess what i'm saying is essentially those boundaries are conditions i mean <laughs> we say boundaries. i mean but those boundaries are conditions. <laughs> I mean, um, yeah no i hear you yeah I, hear I, you. I guess we were saying like if i'm choosing you mm. then the love i give is as long as i'm choosing you you're going to get love from me whatever it is you do exactly i guess all i'm saying is that they can get to a point where you don't choose them yeah yeah but i can still love you like i still love my son's dad I don't, I hear my that. love for him like if he called that. me up and was like oh my god something's happened i would be gone i'd be there like, yeah they would course. never it never stops do i like him Meh. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> do I want to yeah. sleep in the same bed as him? Meh. But yeah. do I love him? One hundred percent, I love him. I've known yeah. him since I was nineteen years old. Yeah, so of course, like yeah. I, yeah, was, I hear yeah. that. I hear that. Pow.